right, beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a hour long yin yoga practice. My name is Holly. My pronouns are she, her. This is a floor based class. It's a beginner friendly class. You don't need any fancy yoga props or prior uh, experience practicing yoga. You will want a carpeted area or a towel or a yoga mat if you have one. And you might also want um, like a, a blanket or a small pillow nearby. This is not a prop heavy class, but there might be points where um, a pillow or blanket come in handy. So you're welcome to grab those now. All right. So as you're ready, make your way into a comfortable seated position. This is a floor-based class. We'll be on the floor for the rest of class. You are welcome to sit in Sukhasana, easy pose with knees bent, one in front of the other. You can also sit crisscross applesauce or with your feet out in front of you. And for some folks, it feels good to have a small pillow or blanket underneath your seat so that your hips are a little higher than your knees. And that can make sitting like this more comfortable as well. Um, and throughout class, if I'm you know suggesting something that doesn't feel right for your body or you have another idea in mind, remember that you can take different variations of postures. You can do something else entirely, but you can always skip a posture or breathing exercise and simply um, enjoy some time in stillness and breath, either sitting or lying down. We're going to start with a breathing exercise called square breathing, where um, you will inhale through your nose for a count of four, hold that breath for four, exhale through the nose for four, and then hold the exhale for four. And it's called square breathing because the inhale, the pause, the exhale, and the pause are all equal amounts of time. And some people like to actually draw in their mind's eye a square with their breath. So on the inhale, you might imagine um, drawing one side of the square, and you hold, exhale, and then hold completing the square. For this breathing exercise, you are welcome to close your eyes can also do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose or um, pick a spot on the floor or wall in front of you that helps you to feel anchored. You can place your hands on your knees with palms facing down as a symbolic gesture that you're really in your body rooted in the present moment. You can also have your hands on your knees, palms facing up as a symbolic gesture that you're open um, to whatever comes to you in the next hour. Swing up tall, relax your jaw, seal your lips, and we'll begin with a few minutes of square breathing. So take an inhale through your nose for one, two, three, four. Hold the inhale breath, one, two, three, four. Exhale through your nose, one, two, three, four. Hold the exhale breath, one, two, three, four. Inhale through your nose, four, three, two, one. Hold your breath, four, three, two, one. Exhale through your nose, four, three, two, one. Hold the exhale, four, three, two, one. Breathe in for four. Hold for four. You're welcome to count to help center your mind. Exhale for four. You can also trace a square in your mind's eye. Hold the exhale for four. Inhale four. Pause four. Exhale four. Pause four. We're going to do five more minutes of square breathing. This is meant to be meditative. It's a way to help you um, focus your mind on your breath. So if you notice your mind wandering, just return to the breath in and out through your nose.
your mind is wandering, again, it can be helpful to count the breath. It can also be useful to draw in your mind's eye four sides of the square with the inhale, pause, exhale, and pause. It can also be helpful sometimes to, again, focus on a spot on the floor or on the wall, or keep eyes closed or do a soft fuzzy gaze beyond the tip of your nose. With two more minutes of square breathing, you're welcome to continue the four count, or you can experiment with like a five or a six count. Again, just making sure that the inhale, pause, exhale, and pause are all for the same amount of time. And if you're just joining, we're doing square breathing, inhaling, holding, exhaling, and holding for equal amounts of time so that our breath makes a square. Let's do one more full round of square breathing. As you're ready, just return your breath to normal, in and out through your nose. So in yin yoga, we will hold postures for long periods of time. On a physical level, we're working not just into muscle tightness, but into connective tissue, into tendons, ligaments, fascia, joints. And maybe on a psychological, emotional, or even spiritual level, in yin yoga, we also confront some discomfort around being still, right, or silence. And as a yoga teacher, I, I never want to tell someone to go to a point of pain, right, in a posture. But sometimes in yin yoga, you might feel a little uncomfortable at a certain point, and not a point of pain, but you might feel a little uncomfortable partway through a posture. Um, and it is entirely up to you if that threshold becomes so much that it's entering into the pain category, or you might want to do something else, or if you can or are interested in exploring that edge and observing kind of what happens when you get beyond maybe mental resistance to discomfort. And the biggest tool in our toolbox anytime that our mind is really starting to wander or we're a little uncomfortable in a posture is our breath, right? So just like we just practiced focusing on the breath, you're welcome to return to your breath at any point in class. And again, if, if a posture ever gets to be too much, you can always exit the posture early and really just focus on your breath. And that's a beautiful practice of yoga as well. We're gonna make our way onto our backs. So lie on your back. With your arms down by your side. And if you'd like, you can bend your knees 
with your feet on the floor, let your knees rest together. This is called collapsed bridge pose. Let your head be heavy on the floor. Start to soften through your shoulders, middle back, lower back, through your hips and glutes. Feel the pads of your feet on the floor. You can inhale, feel your body rise. Exhale, body fall, let your shoulders relax. Lengthen your legs so that your legs are straight and flat on the floor. And our first posture is a fan favorite called banana pose or bananasana. Picture in your mind's eye your favorite banana. It can be um, perfectly yellow and ripe. It might be a little brown and bruised, ready for banana bread. It could be still a little green in parts. Um, and we're gonna make that banana shape with our body. So bring your feet together, arms overhead. You can stretch up and down if that feels good. And then start to walk your hands and feet to the right side of the room, stretching the left side body. I'm gonna move slightly because my camera, there we go, camera's all fuzzy. Okay, so then bring your hands and arms to the right side of the room, stretching the left side body and gently squeezing into the left side body. And from here, there's lots of options we can play around with. You can keep your feet and hands side by side. You can cross your left ankle over your right ankle, which can stretch the left IT band, the outer left thigh. You can also cross your left hand over your right hand for a little bit more of a shoulder opener. You can bend your elbows and catch opposite elbow and opposite hand. Or if having the arms overhead is too much on the shoulders, you can always have one or both arms down by your side. So you're still getting the side body stretch without too much um, opening to the shoulders. You can keep the back of your head on the floor. You can also look over your right shoulder, bringing your right ear towards the floor for a little neck and shoulder stretch. We'll hold here for a total of five minutes. We are already a minute into the posture. In yin yoga, because we hold postures for so long, um, do about like 70% of what you would do in a class where you're holding postures for like a minute at a time, right? You want to do a little bit less, but the theory is that because we hold longer, it actually works deeper into the body. Just keep in mind that we'll be here for a while. And again, you can close your eyes. You can do a soft, fuzzy gaze just beyond the tip of your nose. You can also anchor on a spot on the floor, the wall, or the ceiling if that helps you feel connected to your body. And apart from vision, right, can also be useful for some people to focus on a different sensation, be it um, a, a calming sound that you hear, maybe a scent if you have like an essential oil that you use in your yoga practice, it can be a sensation such as really grounding your shoulders down to the floor and softening through your hips. It could be a taste. I know some people who like to practice a little bit of like peppermint oil on their tongue. But again, you can use the five senses throughout your practice if that helps you feel grounded as well. We'll hold here for three more minutes. If what you're doing does not feel sustainable, you're welcome um, to bring your hands and feet back a little closer towards your mat, uh, towards the center line of your mat, and that'll lessen the stretch. Or if, you know, almost halfway through, you don't feel anything at all. You can also walk your hands and feet a little bit further to the right side of the room to deepen the stretch. We'll give us two and a half minutes just to be still and breathe.
We have about 30 seconds left in the posture. You're welcome to stay just as you are, knowing that the end is near. You can also walk your hands and feet a little bit closer to the right side of the room to stretch the left side body deeper at the end. A slow inhale through your nose. Anything you'd like to let go of, let it go through the exhale breath. When we hold postures for long periods of time, we want to come out of them slowly because our body's kind of like molded to that shape. So we'll come out slowly with intention. Your head is rolled to the right. Take your time bringing the back of your head to the floor. If your elbows are bent, you can lengthen and extend your arms. If your hands are crossed, you can uncross your hands. If your ankles are crossed, uncross ankles. And at your own pace, walk your hands and feet back to the center line of your mat. You can stretch up and down or maybe move your hips right and left. And then take your arms down by your side for a puddle pose, which is yin yoga has some like cute names for posture. So rather than calling this savasana or corpse pose, which admittedly can be a little macabre, we call this puddle pose like a rain puddle. And open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. If lying on your back with your legs straight does not feel good to your lower lumbar spine, you're welcome to place a small pillow or blanket under your lower back and or you can bend your knees with your feet on the floor knees resting together and collapse fridge and this is a really nice alternative um, to puddle pose that offers some more support to the lower back. We'll take a few breaths in stillness in a neutral position between every set of every posture to let the body reset after holding and breathing. Feel your feet on the floor, hands on the floor, shoulders and head on the floor. All right, we'll do the other side of our banana pose. Bring your feet together, arms overhead. And again, you can stretch up and down like you're having a good yawn. Maybe flex your toes back. And then start to walk your hands and feet to the left side of your space. So you're stretching the right side body and gently squeezing into the left side body. Now, for the sake of symmetry, if you crossed your left ankle over your right ankle on the other side, you might try crossing your right ankle over the left ankle on this side. However, we're not symmetrical and this side might need a different shape, be it from an injury or a surgery or just, you know, like an area of your body that's a little bit tighter or more, more loose on this side. So keep that in mind. So again, you can cross your right ankle over your left ankle or keep them side by side. You can keep your hand side by side or cross your right palm over left palm. You're also welcome to bend your elbows, catching elbows and opposite hands. And if this is too much for the shoulders, you can bring one or both arms down by your side to let the shoulders relax more. You can keep your the back of your head on the floor, or if you'd like a stretch to your right side neck, you can roll your left ear down towards the floor. We'll hold here for five minutes, already a minute into the posture. So in this posture, we're working on shoulder opener. We're opening through our chest and abdomen and hips. And we're stretching through the right side body and gently squeezing through the left side body. And if the right ankle is crossed over the left ankle, it's also a nice stretch to the outer right thigh and IT band. So it's a, it's a simple posture, but it's, it's actually a, a fair amount going on. In some styles of yoga, um, particularly ones that are like more cardiovascular, right, or you're, you're standing or balancing a lot, um, you're contracting muscles often to get into postures. 
Um, in yin yoga, in this style of yoga, we want to relax much muscles as much as possible. So notice if you're like holding tension, for example, in your right glute, right? I can feel I have some tension in my right thigh with my ankles crossed. See if you can sort of melt into the posture and let go of any forcing or fighting, even if that means that you take a different shape or do a little bit less. Less is more. This can certainly be a subtle practice. Um, again, the more you bring your hands and feet to the center line of your body, the more gentle the stretch. And the more you walk your hands and feet to the left side of the room, the deeper the stretch. But because we're holding for five minutes, don't feel like you need to get the deepest stretch of all time to the right side body, right? A little bit goes a long way. And almost halfway through the posture, again, if what you're doing just doesn't feel sustainable, doesn't feel right, you're welcome to make a different shape or deepen or um, lessen the depth of your asana. Otherwise, holding just as you are, this practice of stillness is a practice. And I'll give us some time here just to breathe and be still. There's about 30 seconds left in the posture. You can stay just as you are, knowing that we're all, almost to the end. Or if you'd like to deepen your stretch, you can walk your hands and feet a little bit more to the left side of the room. And inhale. And then exhale, can be through the nose or the mouth. And we'll slowly start to come out of the posture. If you're looking to the left, take your time bringing the back of your head to the floor. If your elbows are bent, you can extend your arms. And if your hands are crossed, uncross hands. Uncross ankles. And at a leisurely pace, walk your hands and feet back to the middle of your space. Slide your arms down by your side with any little counter motions you'd like to make. Like I'm moving my knees and hips right and left. Any counter motions you'd like to make, you're welcome to do so. Then you can take your puddle pose with your legs and arms long or collapse bridge with knees bent, feet on the floor, and knees resting together. It's 
So you may be familiar with the five love languages, um, which I think are like, what are they? Like words of affirmation, gift giving, um, touch, quality time, and acts of service. I think those are the five. Um, and sometimes I think about them. And so, for example, if you're love, if you're most people, you know, are not strongly one or the other, they just maybe prefer one a little bit more. So, for example, people whose love languages touch, like really appreciate hugs, right? Or someone whose love language is gift giving probably really enjoys both receiving, but also giving gifts to people that they care about. Um, but for folks who, um, you know, quality time really speaks to them. Think about like, if you've ever um, been in the presence of someone you love and they're just like really paying attention to what you have to say. And like, it's very clear that they're listening to you or you're having a nice time doing something together, right? Even if it's just watching a movie together. Sometimes I think about um, yoga as quality time with yourself. So again, if you've ever experienced someone, you know, like really hearing what you have to say, or like really just like enjoying being in your presence, even if it's in companionable silence, that's kind of what we're doing here with ourself, right? Like you're really listening to your body. Um, you're really giving yourself space just to be with yourself and breathe and enjoy. And it's not necessarily that, you know, in our stillness, we have an absence of thought or we're completely peaceful all the time, but it's that continuously staying present with ourselves that I think is such a gift, right? That we often give to others or receive from others, but we don't always do for ourselves. This is some quality time just for you. Bend your knees if they're not already with feet on the floor. You're gonna roll off to one side and press yourself up into a seated position. There's no rush. Um, in general, yin yoga is a seated practice. However, there is one standing posture in the um, yin yoga canon, and we will try that today. It's called dangling pose, and I will offer an alternative for anyone um, for whom standing does not feel good, um, or um, just something about the posture doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna show you this alternative first and we can all do it. Um, you're gonna sit on your bum with your legs in front of you. They don't have to be perfectly together. I'm a little blurry here. Um, your feet can relax. And from here, you're gonna stick your butt out a little bit and simply fold forward. So you're hinging at your hips, stretching through the hamstrings and calves. You are welcome to have a flat back. This is particularly useful um, for people who have a history of slip discs, or if it feels good, you can let your spine round and your head hang heavy. Um, which again, for some people can feel really good to the lower back, but for other people, um, especially if you have a bad lower back or a painful lower back, um, keeping a flat spine can help. So this is our alternative to dangling pose. You're welcome to stay here. You can also lift your chest up. Bend your knees, press your hands into the floor and make yourself into a standing position, which sorry, that means part of me is, <laughs> you can't see all of me, but that's okay. You'll see all of me in a second. So for dangling pose, all of our body proportions are different, but you probably want between two to four feet between your feet. So your feet aren't perfectly close together, but they also don't need to be super far apart. From here, you can bend your knees generously and start to fold forward. So it's called dangling pose because you're dangling, right? <laughs> Knees can stay bent. From here, you can let your head hang heavy so your spine rounds into a cashew shape. And at first, keeping your heels on the floor, you might bend one knee, straighten the other, move your hips right and left. Right, and then make your way back to center. Um, you can bring a little bit of your body weight forward into the balls of your feet, or even your hands on the floor in front of you if your hands are on the floor. You can also bend your elbows and catch opposite elbow and opposite hand. Let your head hang heavy. Again, knees can bend generously. We're gonna stay here for three more minutes for a total of four minutes. Um, in this posture, we're stretching through the backs of the legs. We're also really stretching through the lower back, middle back, upper back, through the neck spine. Um, 
and there's a lot of blood coming to your head in some ways I feel like this is like a facial but in reverse so your head get, might get a little bit pink it's fine this is what's called an inversion where your heart is higher than your head so again we're getting a lot of blood and oxygen to the brain um and, and again you're reversing gravity so some people say going upside down like this is good for <laughs> your skin um, but it's definitely good for blood flow to the brain as well and we're gonna hold here for another minute and a half Notice where you're forcing or fighting the posture and see if you can relax into the posture. Soften through the muscles rather than tensing them. In the final 30 seconds of the posture, you can stay just as you are, or if you'd like a deeper hamstring stretch, you can send your hips up towards the ceiling a little bit more, lengthening through the backs of the legs. Take a slow inhale through your nose, feel your ribs expand. Anything you'd like to let go of. Let it go through the exhale breath. Sometimes the change in perspective, literally seeing the world from upside down, helps us put things in perspective, maybe about what we can let go of and what still works. To come out of the posture, if you're in dangling pose, put your hands on the floor in front of you. You can walk your hands forward as much as you need. Come onto your knees and then come onto your bum and we will sit here sitting up tall for a moment and if you um stayed on the floor and were folded forward you can simply walk your hands back in sitting upright if you're in dangling pose right there's a lot of blood that went from the heart to the head and now as we sit upright that blood is going back into the heart so it can be helpful to take a moment here just to get your bearings especially if you have low blood pressure or pots and then as you're ready you're going to make your way back onto your back either into puddle pose with your legs straight or collapsed bridge with knees bent resting together. Part of this quality time again is really just being present with ourselves here. You might notice some changes coming out of that posture, right? Maybe you're noticing a shift in temperature in your feet, for example as blood circulates back down to the feet. It's normal to feel a little lightheaded even or dizzy. So you might feel physical shifts in your body. You might also feel like emotional shifts or even spiritual shifts, right? These postures and breathing exercises sometimes feel pretty routine or mundane or even boring, but sometimes they can be kind of profound. We're just bearing witness and observing. As you're ready, you can bend your knees if they're not already, feet on the floor. Roll off to one side, maybe the side you haven't rolled off to yet. If you remember, give yourself a hug. And then keep rolling over onto your abdomen for our back bend, Sphinx Pose. So for Sphinx Pose, you can have 
your legs long on the floor, feet about hip width distance. They don't need to be perfectly together, but they're not too far out. Then you're going to bend your elbows so that your forearms are on the floor. Hands and elbows should be about shoulder width distance. So the idea here is it's a back bend and a, um, a gentle massage to the abdominal wall. You're welcome to have your elbows directly under your shoulders, which is a pretty deep back bend. You can also walk your hands forward um, so your elbows are in front of your shoulders, and that will make the back bend a little bit more gentle. If lying on your abdomen does not feel good today, two options. You can place a pillow underneath your um, upper thighs to your hips so that you're still in the back bend, but your stomach hangs off, so there's less pressure on the abdomen. Or you can take this same small pillow or blanket under your lower back and lie on your back. And we want it, we want it to be a small pillow, not a big one for this, so that you still get just that gentle compression to the spine. Um, in general, in yin yoga, right, we want to um, relax into postures. But with Sphinx pose, there is some activation to the forearms and elbows so that your shoulders stay out of your ears. So I know for me in this posture, the hardest thing is keeping my shoulders out of my ears, right? Press down through the elbows, shoulders out of the ears, roll your shoulders back and down away from your ears. And we're going to hold here for two more minutes. This is a great um, way to stretch the fascia on your chest, right? It's a subtle back bend, a little bit goes a long way. And again, we're placing some pressure on the abdomen only if that feels good. Just a nice little massage to the abdominal wall, good for digestion. Particularly in a world where we tend to hunch forward a lot, back bends can feel a little uncomfortable, but they're really good for spinal mobility and for helping us to sit and stand tall outside of our yoga practice. We'll hold here for another minute and a half. With 30 seconds left in the posture, you can stay just as you are. Or if you'd like a deeper back bend, you can walk your elbows directly under your shoulders or spread your fingers wide, push your knuckles down and lengthen your arms. This is called seal pose and it's a deeper back bend. Shoulders back out of the ears, chin away from the chest. Take an inhale and an exhale. If you're in seal pose with arms extended, bend your elbows. Everybody together, we're gonna to bring our elbows out, hands in, bring your forehead to the floor. You have an option to stay here, or if you'd like a gentle neck and shoulder twist, you can look to one side. So I'm gonna to look to my left, bringing right ear on the mat. You're welcome to keep your elbows bent with your hands close to your face or you can bring one or both arms down by your side, palms facing up, and then it's a subtle internal rotation to the shoulders. Then deep belly breaths, in and out to your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. And if you're looking to one side, you can gently lift your head and look to the other side, other ear on your mat.
As you're ready, gently lift your head, place your hands on the floor under your shoulders and press yourself up into a kneeling position. So you can sit back, stretching out the toes and ankles. Next, we're gonna do a wide-legged child's pose. Um, if you have tight toes, ankles, or knees, you're welcome to roll up your yoga mat, replace a small um, pillow or blanket any, under any delicate lower body joints. And from here, keep your big toes together, open up your knees and start to sink your hips back towards your heels. And you're also welcome to place a small pillow or blanket under, between your um, hamstrings and calves if that helps your hips relax a little bit more. And then from here, you can walk your hands forward. I'm also gonna place a small pillow in between my upper thighs and chest. Okay, from here, you can walk your arms forward, bringing your forehead down towards the floor. And I'm gonna give you a couple options. You're welcome to take child's pose here with your arms long overhead. You can also try fetal pose with your arms down by your side, palms facing up. Or if you would like a um, deltoid shoulder stretch, we're gonna do something akin to thread the needle. You're gonna take your right arm underneath your left arm with your palm facing up. So the left arm stays forward, right arm comes underneath the left arm, out to the left, palm faces up. That's a deltoid shoulder stretch. We're gonna hold here for a total of five minutes. We're already a minute in, and at the halfway point, if you're doing this thread the needle motion, I will tell you and we can do the other side. All right, if you're in that thread the needle, you might lift your head slightly, take your right arm out from under your left arm, reach your right arm forward, take a breath here. And if you need to, you know, add or remove a pillow from under your knees, your toes, your ankles, your hips, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, we're gonna thread the needle other side, you can lift your head slightly, take your left arm underneath your right arm out to the right, palm faces up, forehead to floor, Breathing into that left deltoid, left shoulder. And we'll hold here. Notice where you might be holding on to tension. Start to give into the posture. Relaxing into it.
you might really start to feel it or I'm feeling it right in like my toes and my hips. And this is that area where you as your own teacher get to decide if it's too much right or if this is a place where you can maybe confront a little bit discomfort, which of course is different from pain, right? Not going to a point of pain, but maybe confronting a little bit of discomfort and breathing through that. You're threading the needle on this side, gently lift your head, unthread the needle, reach your arms forward, sink your hips back, and we'll hold here for 30 more seconds. Take an inhale, feel your ribs expand. Exhale, let it go. Slowly walk your hands in under your shoulders. There's no rush. Press your palms into the floor, press yourself up. You can come up with a flat back or round your way out if that feels good. If you'd like to take a counter stretch, you can place your hands behind you and do a little back bend, a little twist. And then at your own pace, you can remove any props that you're using and unroll your mat if it was rolled up. And then turn, make your way onto your back, back into your puddle pose or collapsed bridge. And again, as you release out of that posture, you might, for example, notice a shift in temperature in your feet as some more blood comes back into the feet. We carry a lot of tension in our hips, and sometimes this can come out through a physical sensation in the lower body, <laughs> excuse me, lower body, or it can come out um, like through the urge to like laugh or to cry or um, or any sort of other and not just physical sensation, but emotional sensation, remembering that actually physical and emotional sensations are not separate categories or binaries. Um, they are called feelings for a reason because we literally feel them. So they are in fact physical sensations in our body, right? So much, especially in like Western culture, we like try to separate the physical from the emotional, um, but more and more even Western medicine is catching up to the fact that they're very much related and not separate, but um, overlapping. There's a concept in yoga that I find really helpful called the koshas, K-O-S-H-A-S. -S, um, and they're kind of like, layers to your being almost like onion layers layers in an onion and the first is like just your physical body which like includes your brain right um but it's really just like the idea of like we are organs and glands and scalp and you know cells right um and then it as it goes through the layers it's like your mental being like what's going on in your brain and then you're like feeling being and then the deep I think there's seven koshas and the deepest layer is kind of is essentially like your soul right or like the essence of who you are um but I find that really helpful because it does not separate you know our brains from our bodies from our hearts and our souls but it is a reminder that it's kind of layered and I think yoga helps us peel back those layers okay Take your arms out to the side in a big expansive gesture. Can keep them straight or bend your elbows, cactusing them like goalposts. Bend your knees if they're not already, feet on the floor. 
and then you're going to roll to your left so that your hips stack one on top of the other. This is option one, keeping your chest open, right shoulder down towards the floor, keeping your hips stacked. Um, option two, you can kick your right leg out to the left for an IT band stretch. You can straighten your bottom leg to the back of your mat, or if you would like a quadricep stretch, you can slide your bottom left foot to the right, and then you can reach your right arm down and reach for your left foot with your right hand. Um, hand and foot might not touch, right? That's okay. The idea is keeping that bottom leg bent and sliding the foot towards the right side of the room can help to stretch the quad. You can keep the back of your head on the floor. You can also look over your right shoulder, drawing your right ear towards the floor. So spine twist, an abdominal wall twist, good for digestion, especially during seasonal transitions. And if your top right leg is kicked out to the left, it's also a stretch, again, to that right hip, right thigh, um, right IT band. And if your bottom leg is bent towards the right, it's also a stretch to that left quad. We'll hold here for one more minute. And inhale and an exhale. If you're looking over your right shoulder, slowly bring the back of your head to the floor. If your bottom leg is bent and you're reaching for that left foot with your right hand, undo the grip if you have it. And either way, just slide your left foot, left knee, a little bit back to the left. If your top leg is kicked out to the left, slowly bend your right knee so that your right knee stacks on top of the left. And then with or without the use of your hands, roll your right hip back down to the floor. And we're all gonna stay here in a collapsed bridge with your feet on the floor, knees resting together. You can have your arms down by your side. You even place your hands on your heart space or abdomen. We'll take a few breaths here. All right, let's do the other side. You can bring your arms out to the side or bend them, cactusing them like goalposts. You can roll this time to the right so that your left hip stacks on top of right hip, knees bent, left shoulder down to the floor. And again, keep in mind that for the sake of symmetry, you might try making the same shape on this side, um, but also because we're not symmetrical, you might need to make a different shape on this side and that's okay too. So we'll we'll play around from here. You can keep both knees bent, hips stacked. You can kick your top left leg out to the right for an IT band stretch, stretching the outer left thigh. 
You can keep your bottom leg bent. You can also straighten it to the back wall. Or if you'd like that quad stretch, keep the knee bent, slide your left foot to the left, reach down with your left hand, reach for your right foot with your left hand. And hand and foot might not touch, but it's still this idea of bringing them closer together. Right knee in line with right hip, left hip over right hip. You can keep the back of your head on the floor, or you can look over your left shoulder, bringing your left ear down towards the floor. So we're opening up through the chest and shoulders, twisting the spine, twisting the abdomen, and again, stretching through the lower body as well. As you breathe through your nose, we'll hold here for one more minute. Sink into your breath, melt into the mat, let the floor hold you up. Take an easy breath in and an easy breath out. If you're looking to your left, gently bring the back of your head to the floor. If you're reaching for your right foot with your left hand, release that grip if you have it, then slide your right knee back to the right. If your top leg is bent, bend your bottom leg. So knees stack one on top of the other. And with or without the use of your hands, roll your left hip back down to the floor. For our final shape, you're welcome to stay in collapsed bridge with feet on the floor and knees resting together. Or you can lower your legs back down into your puddle pose. You can open your arms and legs as much or as little as you'd like. And if you have a blanket that you'd like to place over your body or a pillow that might feel good under your head or your knees or your lower back, you're welcome to grab that. Let your heels be heavy on the floor. Soften through the arches of your feet. The palms of your hands. Relax through your abdomen. Soften through your chest. Give your shoulders permission to relax. Relax your jaw, your brow. Let your head be heavy. You can inhale, body rise. Anything you'd like to let go of, exhale, body fall. A moment to thank yourself for this quality time, this act of service right, that you've given yourself. I think in many ways, yoga kind of fits on all the five love languages, but again, it's you directing that back at yourself. Good for you for practicing yoga today. And stay in your final puddle pose as long as you'd like. When you do decide to get up, you might make the practice of getting up part of your yoga class. So you might get up slowly with intention. Be sitting up for a while before you stand up, and especially if you have low blood pressure because we've been on the floor for a while. Make sure that you're drinking lots of water throughout the rest of the evening. We um, like really work into the muscles and that can release some lactic acid 
in the body. So you want to hydrate properly. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. And I hope to practice with you soon. Bye, friends.